Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the predictions for the 12 signs. So from now until February 2026, predictions for Aries. Okay, Aries rising. If you're Aries rising, you might have more unforeseen expenses coming up this time because it's in the 12th house, house of expenses. Also, possibly more losses. And the whole thing I said about spirituality and everything I just talked about is very true for Aries, okay? Because it's not just in the 12th sign, but in their 12th house. So it's very important for Aries to like, just to be aware of everything I just said. Um, there can also be trouble with sleep, sleep problems, because 12th house has a lot to do with sleep, dreams, you know? Um, uh, if you're... I don't know. Well, if you're the type of person who gets troubled by things at night, you may want to get a reading or do something about this because this isn't something that's just going to go away. If you've been having sleep problems already since last March, it's probably not just going to go away on its own. You're going to want to get a reading. You're going to want to talk to therapists, work through this. Pacifying the Vata Dosha would probably be at the root of it. Um, and... If for anyone who's in Aries who's any sort of battling, it could have to do with even like losses in battle, which I don't want to be like worrying you about that, but this is just the themes that we see. If you think that's the case, then just don't push to, don't, you know, pick your battles more wisely, right? Okay, so then Taurus. Taurus rising is going to see more accomplishment of their long term goals. Um, as long as they're working hard. If it's a more afflicted Saturn in their chart and then there's more afflictions in Pisces, then it might be more loss of support from groups and abandonment of goals or loss of goals. But if it's a more strong Saturn in their chart, it should overall be pretty good where they get more um, influential people validating them and perhaps even get a title during this phase, like a degree. If you're going to college, you will probably get your degree. Or if you need to get a visa, you might be able to get your visa during this time. If anyone of you guys have ever had an issue with visas or things like that, let me know. Because um, I've done some work on that. Um, and yeah, some sort of getting uh, some sort of accomplishment of long-term goals, titles, or even um, increase in your pay. Gemini rising is going to see accomplishment of important deeds. Now, this is very big. When Saturn goes through your 10th house, it's a big time for changes in work for the better and accomplishing important deeds. So Gemini risings, you have important work to be doing over the next two years. Uh, long term work as well. There can be difficulty with the father, though, at this time. So you might have more challenges with your father or with authorities. You might also have either an increase in respect and authority if you've been to, if you merit that and been working towards that, or if you haven't, it's going to be the complete opposite, a loss of that. Um, and it's also indicating being away from home more. Um, see, with Saturn, it really depends on what you've been doing with your karmas for the last thirty years since the last time he was there. So, if you've been working good with that area of life, then it will be an upgrade. If not, otherwise. So like Cancer, Cancer has Saturn going through its ninth house. So if one's a very spiritual person, been really working on their Dharma, they're going to feel a, like a windfall happen. You know what I mean? And they're going to develop a higher level of maturity and even a higher level of respect from others for their Dharma. But a lot of them are going to feel more like if it's not if it's not been worked on and their Saturn's not as strong in the chart, they're going to feel a lot more burned out on their faith burned out on spirituality in general, kind of just like not into their dharma. Like I was saying, like feeling stagnant, um, but it's actually time to get more serious about that and do some work to get yourself motivated in that position. If, if it's a Leo, Leo rising, it's going through the eighth. Now, if they're meriting it, they've been working hard, um, you'll actually get a career upgrade during this time. Because when Saturn moves through your 8th, it's the 11th from your 10th. So it's the reward zone. Um, yeah. So you can actually get a career upgrade at this time. For example, when Saturn went through my 8th was when I actually found my teacher, my main teacher. And he ended up being like the main person that I learned and from. And that was that two and a half year window was really the time that I really became a real astrologer, you know? Um, 
and then uh, so hopefully you guys will get a career upgrade um, but it's also an important time to just work on your vulnerabilities and your psychology so like studying astrology was good for me then but it, so it can be a good time to study astrology or just uh, get more readings or whatever um, Virgo they're gonna see Saturn in the seventh so we're gonna see a time to be alone more more of a time for being isolated and alone it can also indicate relationship difficulties and separation from a marriage. Like if you've been married for a long time or something and you think it's going to end, it's only going to end then, you know? Uh, I don't mean definitely, but it's just, again, you got to look at all the things in the chart. I'm not saying anything for you particularly. I'm saying this just for Virgo. But yeah, ending of marriage, ending of relationships, major relationship changes. Um, and more of a time to be isolated. But remember what Yogananda said, the price of greatness is isolation. You can't really become great if you're just hanging out, running around with everyone all the time. To become great requires isolation. And that is why Saturn is the strongest in the seventh and gets the most digbala. So of all the houses, actually for Virgo, this is like one of the most constructive transits because Saturn is gonna have the most digbala. So he's gonna, the person's gonna be um, like more, more clearly able to know what to do with their relationships. Like I need to be alone or I need to be with these people, etc. Um, Libra, Libra will see it in the sixth house. So of course, like, uh, feeling more health issues, more stagnancy, more dietary issues, the need to make long-term dietary changes. Actually, yeah, that's a big thing. When Saturn goes through the sixth, you need to make long-term long dietary changes usually. For example, when that happened for me was when I became a vegetarian at like 19 or 20. I have stayed that way my whole life because it was the Saturn. It was a long-term transit doing it. So if you've been needing to stop eating so much meat or her, Perhaps it's dairy or sugar or uh, processed foods or alcohol or drugs or whatever. It would be a good time to make some shifts there. Um, and then also debts and enemies is another classic theme for the sixth house. Scorpio, it's going to be in your fifth house. So it's more like mental lethargy, more like being lethargic, uh, stagnant in the mind a lot of what I was saying about the spiritual stuff is going to be very true for them, like feeling kind of burned out on their spiritual path again, um, needing to meet, needing to like step in and more consciously manage and co-create your life with the divine instead of just going with the flow, like I was saying. And uh, also can indicate issues with your children. If you have any children, they're probably struggling more. You probably need to support them more help them out, buy them some groceries, whatever. Sagittarius, um, it's going to be in the fourth house. So if you've been thinking about moving, it might be time to move. It might be time to get rid of your car or to buy a new car or make some changes with your car, your vehicle of whatever sort, your home, and your emotions and changing your emotions. And of course, changing your home and your environment is gonna help you shift your feelings and your emotions. But there's definitely major sense of emotional lack, pain, sorrow, depression, and one may need to make some changes to do, do something about that. But it's also a great time for long-term investing. So if you're a Sag and you've been interested in what to do with my wealth and my finances, come get a financial reading from me and I'll help you do that. And But um, yeah, Jupiter, uh, Sag, um, Jupiter's ruling planet is in the sixth house, a house of money managing right now. Saturn in the fourth. Money is just not going to fall into your lap if you're not if you're having money problems. You need to do something consciously to do it. And investing, long term investing, is a good idea, just in general, right? Or maybe it's like investing in a in a property, buying a property or something. Whatever. Um, it's going to be different for all the billions of Sages out there. Capricorn. More travel, more short distance travel, but also travel in general, some international travel too. It's gonna be a strong time because Capricorn's ruling planet is Saturn, so Saturn's a third. It's a time of getting stronger overall, overcoming difficulties, training more, uh, 
more events involving servants, so you may have to be a servant or hire servants more. It's always better if you can do the job yourself, but that's up to you. Um, but it's also a good networking time. Very good networking time. Could be some difficulties with siblings, though. Could have some challenges with your siblings. Um, Aquarius. Aquarius, it's going to be in the second house, so the ruling plan is a second. It's a time of working very hard, earning, stacking up resources, stacking up wealth. Um, may need to make changes in uh, how you provide yourself, your food, um, what you're eating, um, what you're imbibing. Um, be a little bit more careful of that. Uh, um, but yeah, like, yeah, so like just changing what you eat and working on your self worth and your sense of self esteem and your sense of value. And yeah, events going on around that could be events um, involving like family as well. Pisces. Pisces is going to be in their first house, so their health will feel sluggish. Their cognizance and intelligence will feel more sluggish. Um, one may need to make a career change or they may need to just stay the course, like I was saying. Um, it depends on if you need, like I was saying earlier, going with the flow versus, versus uh, actually soberly making a conscious long-term change at this point. Um, it's uh, There will be a little bit more expenses for them possibly too. Um, but a time for them to become more thrifty. Um, and But it's the main thing is, like I was saying earlier, for Pisces, it's especially true. They're going to feel like more stagnant in their dharma or in their career. Um, and they're going to have a tougher time being constant in their dharma. You know, like I'm a Pisces rising and I've noticed I just felt more, I felt more like sluggish about doing a lot of things I would normally want to do. And I felt my like myself just my age more so finally. I'm 36 years old, but I've always been like a health freak and a yogi and like eating well. Even though I've done a lot, also a lot of stress to my body, being like a hardcore skateboarder and surfer and martial artist and like partying a lot when I was younger and things like that. I've done a lot of damage to my body, but overall like I've been pretty healthy. Um, but I, and I normally, everyone would always think I was like, 28 or 27 and I would be like that's awesome because I'm almost like a decade older than that but now people I feel like sort of look they I don't feel like I feel like I look older is what I'm getting at and I feel older <sighs> so that's that's part of life though you know that's Saturn um so when you have that in mind you just like, you know, yeah, like I'm just going to approach my life more maturely. I'm going to like intentionally narrow down my life and not do things that don't matter and more frivolous. You know, Saturn is that planet that intentionally makes you narrow down your life for the good. Um, he's that force that's like, what are you really doing with your life? You know, so I feel that energy a lot more, too. And that's a good thing because that will drive you to want to complete works or complete things or do good deeds, essentially. Um, yeah, so Saturn will give us difficulties, but remember, it's always just to bring us up and to bring it to a higher level of understanding. So when it's in Pisces, Pisces is all about spiritual growth, enlightenment, heaven, elevation. So it's going to bring about difficulties that are set, it, set in front of your path to make you truly reach a higher level and not just be an escapist or spiritual narcissist or whatever. Or if you are just faded to be that, then you're just going to be tired of spirituality by the end of these two years and you're going to be over it and you're going to be doing some other thing. Yeah. Okay. I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, you know, if you want to know more, please understand that I teach a Vedic astrology school now. So most of my highest quality content is going to that school. You can subscribe to the Nakshatra course and the Jyotish course. And this is an ongoing course, and this is uh, you can subscribe to this for my and be enrolled in my school for just uh, twenty-seven dollars a month, and you get both class, both of those courses for free. And uh, I also do tutoring one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're studying with me, you can also do, you know, like a tutoring lesson, like once a month or so, to really make sure you're nailing this stuff down. And I mean, within six months to a year of doing that, you will be a skilled astrologer if you really put the time in and train with me you will be a great astrologer. Um, it takes time. Actually, you'll be skilled within a year. I won't say you'll be great within a year, of course. 
but you'll be skilled within a year. Um, please consider this with this whole Saturn Pisces thing because there's so many people that are like literally claiming to be professional astrologers, giving people professional advice, life-changing advice, making them advising on major life-changing decisions and they've like studied astrology for a year and only through like YouTube or like paid a few courses and that's it. If you're one of those people, just really check in with yourself. Like, do you really feel competent and qualified to do that or can you just acknowledge yourself and like accept and embrace that you need correction, you need an instructor, you need a teacher? Um then go about and find them, you know? Like it it takes about, it took me about five years of constant studying with the teacher before I was really able to read charts independently on my own. So just, there's definitely a lot of wonderful windows for you got for healers and people to grow and develop, but just take your time with it during this time and don't try to take any shortcuts. You know what I mean? With Saturn and Pisces, just take your time. Okay. Thanks you guys. Bye.